No! Yeah. Wufu! Hmm? Professor Hoot, the darkness creeps me out! It's completely normal, mm. Wufu! Huh? Did you know why Wufu scare when it gets dark? Mm. Let knowledge click! See in ancient times, our ancestors live among wild animals. Hmm, so nighttime was the most dangerous time. <gasps> Today, even though we live in a much safer environment, this trait still remains in our brain. It's linked to a part of the brain known as the amygdala. When it gets dark, the amygdala becomes more active to signal if there is any danger. For kids, the amygdala is even more sensitive. So, sometimes you feel extra scared in the dark. But why am I still scared of the dark even when there's nothing? That's because of your big imagination. When you see shadows in the dark, hmm? your brain might make up scary things like why animals, hmm? monsters, hmm? or even robbers. Uh, oh, now how can I face the dark? Fear of the dark is totally natural, but oh. you can handle it with a few simple oh. tricks. Hmm. Turn on a small night light so you can see around you. Listen to soft music to help you feel calm. Sleep with your favorite toy or next to someone you love. So you feel safe and cozy. I get it now. The dark isn't scary. It's just my imagination making me think so. Mm. They will protect me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for now. Stay tuned for our next exploration. Sorry, I'm hungry. Is that you? That's not me. Oh. What's just happened? That was an earthquake. I'll tell you what it is. Let knowledge click. Did you know the surface of the earth is made of huge pieces of rock called tectonic plates? These plates are always moving, but very slowly. Sometimes they slide, bump, or push under each other. That causes earthquakes. Big earthquakes can even make mountains. When huge plates push against each other, they squeeze the ground and push it up to form mountain ranges. Usually, we can feel small or far away earthquakes, but strong ones can be very dangerous. So, what can we do? We can only get ourselves ready if an earthquake happens. Let's prepare a supply kit. Can food and water. Yes. Toy. Oh. Yes. Nope. Oh. Flashlight and whistle. No. You need this in case you get stuck. First aid kit. Yes. Great job. <laughs> now remember these oh. things if an earthquake happens. If an earthquake happens while you're inside, remember to drop cover and hold high under something strong oh, like a oh. table or bed don't run outside while the ground is shaking glass or things could fall on you when you're outside stay away from buildings power poles or big trees sit down and cover your head and most important stay calm and listen to the adults we got it that's all for now. Stay tuned for our next exploration. <laughs> uh -huh. Now that I've set foot on the moon, it's time to explore the sun. Oh, huh? 
You're planning to visit the sun? <laughs> That's super dangerous. Did you know why um, nobody could set foot on the sun? <laughs> Let knowledge click. <laughs> the sun is a giant star made of hot gases. The sun's surface temperature is over 5,500 degrees Celsius. That's hundreds of times hotter than a pizza oven. The deeper you go into the sun's core, the hotter it gets, reaching up to 15 million degrees Celsius. Oh. This means we can't even get wow. close to the sun, let alone live on its surface. Even if we could invent a heat proof suit to get close to the sun, it would still be nearly impossible to live there. The temperature is way too high, oh. and the sun has no ground, no plants, or water. <gasps> Since the sun is always shiny, oh. it would be bright 24-7, uh. making it really hard for us to sleep. You wouldn't be able to eat or drink anything either. Mm. Oh. Mm. So, is there anywhere in the universe where we can live? Up to now, besides Earth, scientists still haven't found any planet that's truly suitable for us to live on. Oh. Mars is the most promising planet for possibly building a home for humans in the future. Wow! It's much colder than Earth, but some areas have ice, which means we could extract water. Earth is still the best place for us to live, <laughs> isn't it, Professor? That's all for now. Stay tuned for our next exploration. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh wow! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why does the moon keep uh, following me? Uh. Do you uh. kids know why uh. the moon seems to follow us? Mm. Let knowledge click! <laughs> when we move, things that are closer to us appear to move faster. <laughs> like street lights or nearby cars. Mm. Objects that are farther away, like trees or mountains appear to move more slowly. This phenomenon is called the parallax effect. Now, let's talk about the distance between Earth and the Moon. The Moon is very far from the Earth, about 384,400 kilometers away. Oh. At this distance, your angle of view toward the Moon hardly changes, which make huh? it looks like it's staying still, no matter huh? where you go. So that means I can't outrun the moon, right? <laughs> huh? The moon orbits the Earth at the speed of about 3,683 kilometers per hour. Ah. If you imagine you and the moon are racing, there's no way you could keep up with the speed. Ah. Not only is the moon far away, but it's also really huge. It can make you feel like you can see the moon everywhere you go. I got it! <laughs> That's it for today. Join Wufu as he continues exploring the amazing world in the next episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! no! Monster! Huh? It's eating the sun! <laughs> oh. That's a solar eclipse, huh? not a monster. But don't look at it with your bare eyes. Uh, why, Dr. Who? Yeah. Do you want to know what it is? Let knowledge click! Usually, ah. sunlight comes straight to Earth, 
But sometimes the moon moves in front and blocks the sun. That's a solar eclipse. It's like when I make shadows on the wall with a flashlight, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> there are three types of solar eclipse. Total eclipse. Partial eclipse. Ring shape eclipse. Cone annular eclipse. Wow. So, what are these glasses for, Dr. Hood? On a normal day, if you happen to glance at the sun, your pupil gets tiny because the light is so bright. That helps protect your eyes. During a solar eclipse, the sun looks dim, so your pupils stay wide. It feels safe to look, but the sun's harmful rays are still there. Those rays can really hurt your eyes. It's like using a magnifying glass to burn paper. Your eyes can handle that. Oh! <laughs> That's why you need these special glasses. So, what if we don't have these glasses? <gasps> you can use the pinhole projector. The sunlight goes through a tiny hole and shows the eclipse on the paper. You look at the paper, not at the sky. They block almost all the strong rays from the sun. We got it! <laughs> That's it for today! Join Wufu as he continues exploring the amazing world in the next episodes! Oh. <laughs> Discover everything around us on Wufu Explore Channel!